Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be learning all about Cloud Compare. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have a good understanding of how to use Cloud Compare to visualize point clouds. Before we dive into the specifics, let's take a moment to go over what we'll be covering in this tutorial. First, we'll cover how to download and install Cloud Compare. Then, we'll look at the user interface, which can be a bit overwhelming at first glance. Finally, we'll explore the different tools in the menu bar and demonstrate how they can be used to manipulate and analyze point cloud data. All right, now it's time to get Cloud Compare up and running. To start, open up your web browser and type in Cloud Compare into the search bar. Make sure to spell it right or you might end up on a different website entirely. Before you hit that download button, take a moment to check out the GitHub repository. Here you can see the original code and learn how to install and customize the software to fit your needs. And if you're feeling generous, there's a donate button to support the developer's hard work. Cloud Compare also has a forum where users and developers alike can share tips ask questions, and troubleshoot issues. It's a great place to connect with like-minded individuals and learn from each other's experiences. You can even register to join the community and start contributing yourself, okay? Now let's get back to the download section. You can either click on the download button on the home page or click on the cloud compare image to start the process. Before you start the download, make sure to select your operating system, Windows, Linux, or MacOS. And don't forget to choose between the latest version with all the newest features or the older, more stable version. Once it's finished, you're ready to install Cloud Compare. Installing Cloud Compare is a breeze. Once you have the downloaded file, simply double-click on the executable to begin the installation process. A window will pop up with the option to select whether or not you want to work with Faro laser scanner data. Click Next to continue, and then click Install. The installation process should only take a minute or two, so sit back and relax. Once it's done, you'll be able to find Cloud Compare installed in your Program Files folder. When the installation is complete, Click Finish. If you left the Launch Cloud Compare box checked, the program will automatically open up. And voila, you're now ready to start using Cloud Compare. But before we dive into the tools and features, let's look at the user interface. You'll notice that the layout is clean and intuitive, with a menu bar at the top and various panels and windows throughout the main interface. The menus in Cloud Compare provide access to various functions such as file management, editing tools, processing tools, display options, loaded plugins, three views management, and help. The main toolbar gives you quick access to main editing and processing tools like OpenSave, Point Picking, and Clone. The Scalar Fields toolbar provides quick access to Scalar Fields related tools. The Plugins toolbar gives you quick access to currently loaded plugins including standard and opingle shaders. The View toolbar provides quick access to display-related tools. The database tree in Cloud Compare is used for selection and activation of entities and their features, and the Properties view displays information on the selected entity. Finally, the console provides an output log for information and error messages. Take some time to familiarize yourself with the different areas of the program, such as the 3 view and the toolbar.
Cloud Compare offers a lot of flexibility when it comes to customizing the user interface. You can easily move toolbars around, resize windows, and even create your own custom toolbars to suit your workflow. This can save you a lot of time in the long run by putting the tools you use most frequently right at your fingertips. Look at the top left corner of the interface where you will find a folder symbol. Click on this symbol to open the Open Dialog box. In the Open Dialog box, navigate to the location where your point cloud file is saved. If you cannot find the file, you may need to select the correct file format. Cloud Compare supports a variety of point cloud file formats, including LAS, Text, and Ply. Once you have located your point cloud file, select it and click on the Open button. This will bring up another dialog box that displays some information about the file you just opened, including its last file version and the number of points in the cloud. Here, my point cloud contains more than 57 million points. In this dialog box, you also have the option to select or deselect scalar fields such as intensity and classification. If you don't need these fields for your current task, you can uncheck them to speed up processing time and reduce memory usage. Another option in this dialog box is called tiling. If your point cloud is very large, tiling allows you to split it into smaller files that can be loaded and processed more efficiently. Once you have made your selections in the loading dialog box, click on the apply button to load the point cloud into Cloud Compare. Depending on the size of the file and the complexity of the data, this process may take a few seconds or several minutes. After the point cloud has been loaded, you may see a warning message from Cloud Compare regarding the coordinates of the data. If the coordinates are too large or too small, it can cause issues with processing and visualization. To avoid these problems, Cloud Compare recommends shifting or rescaling the entity so that it is in a local coordinate system with smaller coordinates. It is strongly advised to shift or rescale the entity in this case for two reasons. Firstly, it will speed up processing time and reduce memory usage. Secondly, it will help to avoid any visualization artifacts that may occur if the coordinates are too large or too small. In the Shift Scale dialog box, you will see a checkbox labeled Preserve Global Shift on Save. If you check this box, the original coordinates of the entity will be saved when you export the data. If you leave the box unchecked, the point cloud will be saved in local coordinates. Once you have adjusted the coordinates as needed, click on the Apply button to save the changes. Your point cloud is now ready. Now that you have loaded your point clouds into Cloud Compare, you can see them in the three view and in the database tree on the left hand side. If you want to select a point cloud, simply click on it in the tree view and you will see a yellow bounding box appear around it. To move the point cloud, you can right click and hold while dragging the mouse. To rotate the point cloud, simply left click and hold while dragging the mouse. To see more information about the selected point cloud, right click on it and select information from the drop down menu. This will bring up a window showing you details about the point cloud, such as the number of points and triangles, if it's a mesh, as well as how many scalar fields and subgroups are present in your data. Next, go to the Properties window by clicking on the App Properties icon in the toolbar on the left-hand side. In the Properties window, you can view information about the selected point cloud such as its name, visibility status, colors, skills, and the number of points it contains. You can also switch between scalar field color and irg b color in the properties window. In the View Toolbar located on the left-hand side of the screen, 
you can choose between the orthographic and perspective view modes for the 3 d view. If you notice that the point cloud is reloading each time you move or rotate it, go to the view toolbar and select the screen icon, where you can modify various properties related to the display of your point cloud. To prevent the point cloud from being decimated each time you move or rotate it, you can increase the decimation threshold. In the display settings window, find the option for decimation threshold and increase the value to a number larger than the number of points in your point cloud. For example, if your point cloud contains 50, 7 million points, you can set the decimation threshold to 60 million points. This will ensure that the point cloud is not decimated when you move or rotate it. After increasing the threshold, you should no longer experience the decimation effect when moving or rotating the point cloud. However, it's important to note that this step should only be taken if your computer can handle the increased amount of the data. If your laptop or computer is not equipped to handle this amount of data, it may lead to performance issues or crashes. It's always best to work within the limits of your hardware to ensure smooth and efficient processing of your point cloud data. In addition, it's important to regularly save your work to avoid losing any progress in case of unexpected crashes or errors. Another useful feature is the ability to adjust the size of your points in case they are not clearly visible. To do this, simply select your point clouds and navigate to the Properties menu. Here, you will find a green section where you can increase or decrease the size of your points using the plus and minus icons. Similarly, if you have any polygons in your data, you can also adjust the size of the line. However, in the case where you only have point clouds and no polygons, adjusting the line size will not make any difference to your visualization. To bring your point clouds back to the center screen, you can follow these steps. Select your point clouds by clicking on them. Look for the loop icon in the view toolbar and click on it. This will zoom in on your point clouds and bring them back to the center of the screen. To view your point clouds from above, you can follow these steps. Click on the top view icon in the view full bar bar. This will change your view to a top down perspective, allowing you to see your point clouds from above. You can also switch between different views in cloud compare by using the view tool bar. There are options for front view, back view, side view, and perspective view, which can be useful for different types of analysis or visualization. To access the information stored in a specific point, first select your point cloud and then go to the main toolbar and select point picking. This will open a window showing the X, I, and Z coordinates along with the intensity of the selected point. As we've already seen, you can also adjust the point size from the App Properties view to make it more visible. You can also change the scalar field to visualize different properties of your point cloud, such as the return number, amplitude, or reflectance. The Reflectance Scalar field is visualized using a color scale that you can modify.
To see the color scale, check the visibility box. Play with the Scalar field display parameters until you find the optimal settings for your point cloud visualization. That's all for this video. Now you have Cloud Compare installed and already know a lot about its interface. In the coming session, we will see where we can find and download some three point clouds from Open Access website. Thank you for watching.